on, yeah. Never feel bad, feel bad, come on, yeah. When I never feel bad, feel bad, come on, yeah. You, you gotta get up. Chapter 4, Section 4, Economic Systems. What is the fundamental economic problem? <coughs> Scarcity does not mean that you have a shortage. The fact is, humans' wants are unlimited, but the resources are not. And don't forget the time is a resource. Even if we had enough stuff to make all the stuff that people wanted, it's going to take time to make that stuff, and you can't make it all at once. So because of that, we have to answer the three basic questions. What are we going to make? How are we going to make it? And then how are we going to determine who gets it? Our traditional economies, habit, and custom. Uh, your book will tell you the Inuit shared, and I guess that's bad. We move into a market economy. Questions are answered by the people. People will decide what they want to make and they can keep making it as long as they can get somebody to buy it. Most capitalist governments also provide their own education, health, welfare, services, things like that to various different degrees. So uh, the United States and Norway both are mixed economies with Norway leaning more towards these next economic systems we're going to talk about and us leaning more towards a pure capitalist system but we are a mixed economy we do provide socialist services which brings us to command economies the government owns the property and the businesses there is no incentive everybody works and everybody gets the same equitable distribution of wealth, social control of the resource use for the people and not for individuals. The state will control the essential services. Began in the Judeo-Christian belief of common good, we go back to our Christians living in the catacombs of Rome. And then we're going to break down the various different uh, levels. We're going to start with emerging economies, work, work through developing and developed. So if we break down the basic human economic activities, starting way back hundreds of thousands of years ago, we're going to have primary economic activities. Everybody was a hunter or a gatherer. We are directly relying on natural resources, pulling them from the environment. Fishing, forestry, mining today. Very few hunter-gatherers left on the planet, but you can still find some. Herding. Farming is our most important basic economic activity. And we move on to secondary activities. And so then what are the secondary activities? Well, now you take those raw materials and you turn them into something else. Whether you're processing wheat into flour, taking that tree and turning it into lumber, uh, producing electricity. So you're not just anything that comes out of uh, the other end of a factory will all qualify as a secondary activity. Tertiary activities. Go ahead, say it. It's fun. Tertiary. This is what the majority of the people in the United States do. We are providing services. We do not need raw materials. Uh, pursuing activities that serve others. So that's everything from, you know, you can read the list right there, but it goes from um, the person working at McDonald's to a brain surgeon. By the way, teachers will also be in there. And then here is a really new one, quaternary. Modern economics. So you acquire process share information so it's research government information processes basically you can do this anywhere um, but usually concentrated around highly educated people you have to have access to the internet you can't pull this off by snail mail so then as we compare our countries we have our more developed countries will have a high gdp gross domestic product high level of education and healthcare. 
few farmers and industrial workers. People generally consume more food, live longer, the United States, France, Germany, and Japan. Um, now there are great differences in the standard of living, health care, educational opportunities between more developed countries, but we can talk about that later. The U.S. is the bottom of the list in most of those categories. We should probably try to determine why. Newly industrialized countries. We're moving from agriculture to now manufacturing things. Things start to look up for parts of the country's population. Mexico, Malaysia, Turkey, uh, so there will be a rising middle class. People will be developing wealth. The masses will move from agriculture. They're going to be the ones in the manufacturing plants making your t-shirt for 35 cents an hour. Less developed countries. Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Adequate industries, modern technology, little. They depend on developed nations for manufactured goods, even though many of their manufactured goods are made there because of the low wages. Low standard of living, poor education, health care, Nigeria, El Salvador, Ecuador, Vietnam are some examples your book gives. Economies and world trade. Uh, there are particular trade activities, economic activities, trade patterns, GDP, gross domestic product, that keeps coming up. Sometimes you will see it GNP, as in gross national product, but it means the same thing, domestic with inside a country, national, that's your country. GDP per capita, now that is a better reflection because the United States has so many more people than most countries. Our GDP and our economy is quite large. It is the largest in the world, so we will have the largest GDP in the world. But then when you compare us to countries like Switzerland, much smaller, and you take that GDP and you divide it by the total population, Switzerland's per capita GDP is higher than ours. Great disparity among the nations. Wealthy nations invest money to help poorer countries build their economies and to make lots of money for themselves. We'll get into that long-term World Bank and debt process. Companies will put headquarters in developed nations and manufacturing plants in less developed nations. And then they'll get a post office box in the Cayman Islands so they don't have to pay uh, their corporate taxes in the developed nations. But that's another story. Economic activities. We've looked at developed nations. Technology is high. Industry, high GNP. Developed depend less on developed countries for raw material and labor. Okay, The developed nations, lower technology, lower industry, more agriculture, lower per capita, and they will depend on other countries for support and financial aid. So there is a cycle of dependency. Both countries, both nations need each other. Colonialism, by the way, is going to be the, mo the major reason for the reason developing countries are developing and developed countries are developed. And by the way, developing countries aren't poor, only its people are. All right, that wraps that up.